In this video, we're going to create a ghost shader by using the shader graph tool in Unity. As always, we are aiming this video mainly for beginners and people who are not that used to shader graph or even Unity to begin with, but obviously as an intermediate Unity user, you can still watch the video and also learn how to create this effect. So without further ado, let's create a ghost in Unity. Set me free. Hey guys, Sam here, and in this video, we're going to learn how to create a ghost shader using the shader graph in Unity. If you're new to the channel and like seeing videos of shader graph, Unity tips and tricks, and more beginner-friendly tutorials just like this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to tune and give the video a like. All the thumbs ups are super appreciated and make it very easy for me to see what videos you enjoy the most. And by the way, don't forget that I share source files to everything I create in the videos to all of our Patreons, speaking of which, I would like to give a huge shout out to Richard Stance, Cupola, Trombear MCP, and everyone else supporting the channel. You guys are awesome. If you want to grab the source files for this project and support the content so I can upload more videos to the channel, feel free to check out our Patreon through the link in the description. But now, let's get started. So, first thing we want to strike off of our list is to make sure that we have got Unity 2018.1 or above installed. If not, you can install the latest version of Unity through Unity Hub, which is also linked in the description box of this video. By the way, I'm leaving a bunch of links there for you to check out. And I'm also leaving a link for my beginner's guide video to Shader Graph, which I uploaded like last week, I think it was. And that video basically just gets you introduced to the feature and this one pretty much carries on its legacy, I think you could say. So we're now going to go ahead and create a new PBR graph in our assets folder in Unity, which is going to be the shader asset itself. We can do this by right clicking in our project tab, going to create, select shader, and then pick PBR graph from the list. I'll just rename this graph to Psycho Ghost. And at this point in the video, I also want to give a huge shout out to Andy Touch from Unity as I actually use this shader graph example project in order to learn more about this ghost shader. If you wish to check it out for yourself too, you can find a link to that in the description as well. Wow, what a surprise, I never would have thought that. Next up, let's go ahead and open up the shader asset. This is going to open up in the shader editor and we'll see that we have our master node added by default, which is perfect. We are now going to press space in order to bring up the node menu and then type in normal unpack. We'll then press enter and that will add our node into the editor. We're now going to connect it to our normal input of our master node. That will create this little cool spherical effect, I think you could say. And now we're going to go ahead and create one more node, and this one is called lerp. Many of you might already be familiar with this function from programming, which would not honestly surprise me because it's so widely used. But we are basically going to use it in here in order to transition smoothly between two different colors. Speaking of which, we are now going to create two new nodes in the editor and both of them are actually called color. So just go ahead and create one color node and then just duplicate it or create one more. And we are now going to connect the first color node into the first input of our lerp and then the second color node into the second input. And then we are going to connect the lerp node to our albedo input of the master node and the emission input as well. We are doing both of them because we want the object to have this type of surface color that we are inputting through the color nodes, which is what albedo basically helps with. And we want to apply emission because we don't want the object to emit light way too strongly from different sources. Otherwise, it will break the transparency and that realistic ghost look and also break the color rule. I think now is a pretty good time to add some noise to our shader. We can do this by adding a new node into the editor called Simple Noise and then change the scale to be 30. And now we're going to connect this to the input field of our lerp node because we want the colors to display this type of texture we are getting through our noise. And let's also connect the noise node into the input field of our normal unpack so that we can get the normal map for our noise. That way we will get more realistic shadows to our colors. Before we continue, let's also set the smoothness of our master node to be zero so that we avoid having too much shininess on the object. Now, I feel like we should also add a little bit of motion to this ghost. We're going to now add a new node called tiling and offset. This node can be used to basically change the tiling and also pick an offset for a texture. 
The offset function here is what we are interested in mainly because tiling is what really just scales the texture. Meanwhile, offset will just move it in its current scale. But if we just enter now some random value in the offset field, it will only do it once and not over a period of time, so it's not really in motion, it's just doing it once. In order to animate this as we want to, so it keeps moving by using the offset field, we can create a new node that is called time. However, we cannot pick how fast we want the offset to be by using time, but we can use time to simply tell the shader to animate this and move it over time instead of just once. In order to manipulate the speed, however, we need a new node that is called Vector2. And obviously, as you might recognize from my beginner's guide to shader graph, which is the previous shader graph video, which I'm going to link in the description, we're going to use a multiply node in order to multiply these two nodes. Now, let's go ahead and connect the first output of our time node, which is also called time, into our multiply node. And then we just gotta do the same thing with Vector2. And now we are going to connect the multiply node with our simple noise. However, as you can see, there is no motion yet, which is what we are actually looking for. And that is because the X and Y axis of Vector2 are both set to be zero, which basically means, in this case, no motion. So let's change both of these guys to a value like 0.1. And there we go. That looks nice and it's not way too fast. And the 0.1 is obviously a value you can also play around with, but it's pretty much the perfect value for this kind of effect. But if you want to change it up a little bit, it's very sensitive, so be very careful and do not put it to like one or two because it's just going to be way too fast. It still kind of looks a little weird though, because we see this huge line in the middle as if like the object is pretty much like dividing itself. So let's go ahead and eliminate that. We'll add a position node through our editor and then connect its output with our tiling and offset nodes UV input. We pick UV and none of the other inputs because UV is basically the coordinates for the mesh texture. So when we connect them, you can see that a we, we have a much more smooth animation now. Last but not least, I feel like we should make this a little bit more transparent since we are a ghost after all. So we're just going to go to the master node and press the gear icon on top right. And then just make sure that it's set to be metallic and also transparent. Then we're going to add a last node to our shader called lerp. And we are now going to connect the output of our lerp into the alpha input of our master node. And I was going to say you'll see, but we you won't see anything because we basically have nothing right now. So we're now going to connect simple noise output into the input of our lerp. And voila, we have now got a transparent ghost shader in Unity, which is pretty exciting. So you can now go ahead and edit the value T of lerp because T is used as time and in this scenario we can actually use it to lower the transparency and you can also actually set this value to something like minus one or mi while well, minus one is going to pretty much eliminate that but minus 0.3 if you wish to have it more transparent and I would honestly suggest you to play around with this value and all of the other values that we have edited and manipulated so far to see which one really works the best for you because you might have a specific object that works very well with a specific value value that doesn't really work with my object. And that is pretty much it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed this little ghost effect that we created in Unity and found it helpful. If you did and you want to see more shader graph videos just like this one, make sure to subscribe to stay up to tune and give the video a thumbs up. And now it's obviously time for the question of the day. So my question is, what are your favorite effects in video games right now? Is this some like type of dissolve, a ghost effect like this one that we created? or something else like water, plants, etc. Let me know in the comments and I'll make a video where we create just that. And with that being said, thank you once again for watching this video and I hope to see you in the comments section and in our Discord server. See you guys, peace out. Set me free from my jealousy Won't you exercise my mind?